I'll speak today about exporting food and beverages to the U.S. Although we help with other sectors, drugs, medical devices, and cosmetics, as uh, uh, Gene said, really our uh, products, the products you're interested in here today, will focus and the regulations will focus on the food and beverage sector. So first I'll, I'll briefly touch on the jurisdiction, the history of the US FDA, talk a little bit about some of the other regulatory agencies, the import and, and, and inspection procedures, uh, some of the key requirements, what are the, the main things you need to focus on, and then I'll talk about a regulation, a law that just passed in January of this year that will have some significant changes coming uh, ahead forward that you will need to, to uh, understand and deal with as you export to the U.S. There, it's a really it was some pretty monumental food safety legislation that was signed into law in January of this year by President Obama. Let's give a quick overview first. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration, it is a federal agency. We have federal, state, and local agencies in the U.S. This is a federal agency under the Department of Health and Human Services. It's organized into seven different centers. And the center that we'll focus on is the Center for Food Safety and Applied Nutrition, also known as CIPSAM. Uh, FDA regulates quite a few categories of products. Food and beverages, obviously, and that would include things like health supplements or dietary supplements. They also, of course, regulate drugs, over-the-counter drugs, active pharmaceutical ingredients, prescription drugs, animal drug products, biologics, medical devices, veterinary drugs, cosmetics, radiation-emitting products, which would be things like laptops and cell phones, uh, as well as tobacco. FDA really plays two roles in how they uh, in, in how they function. Firstly, they're the gatekeepers, so they help formulate and determine what the regulations are uh, with input from the industry and from the public. And then, secondly, they are the enforcer of the regulations. So once those regulations are set, it's their job to actually make sure companies adhere to the requirements. All of the regulations that FDA enforces are codified in what's called the Code of Federal Regulations. And Title 21, Section 21, is reserved for all of the rules of the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. The key requirements are under what's called the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. I mentioned the agency, or the center, I should say, that oversees food, Center for Food Safety and Applied Nutrition. Their jurisdiction includes uh, most food products, except for meat and poultry. So they're covering agricultural products, processed foods, canned foods, seafood, uh, alcoholic beverages, uh, bottled water. All of those are covered by FDA under the Center for Food Safety and Applied Nutrition. Now there are other agencies as well that play a role in regulating food. The U.S. Department of Agriculture oversees um, meat and poultry. They also oversees, oversee the importation of fresh produce. The Department of Justice has a, uh, a bureau, the Alcohol, Tobacco, Tax, Trade Bureau, otherwise known as TTB. So if you're exporting alcoholic beverages to the U.S., TTB has jurisdiction over the alcoholic beverages. And every product coming into the U.S. initially falls under the jurisdiction of uh, the Customs and Border Protection. CBP. Now to touch on USDA, the Agricultural Marketing Service, they oversee the National Organic Program. So if you've ever seen this little shield, USDA Organic for organic food products, they are the agency that uh, accredits certifiers who can then go forward and certify that companies are producing products within accordance of the USDA organic uh, program, the NOP uh, program. 
Department of Homeland Security, I mentioned CBP, they enforce all of the import and export regulations in the U.S. at our 317 official ports of entry. So that might be, for example, the Port of L.A., or New York, or Florida, Miami, uh, Norfolk, Virginia. Those are all some of our official ports of entry. So the entry role of CBP is when you are shipping products over there, when they first arrive, all shipments fall under the jurisdiction of Customs and Border Protection. Your buyer in the U.S. will hire a customs broker. That is an individual or a company that has been licensed by CBP to submit an entry or a filing to CBP uh, on the behalf of the importer. And that entry provides customs with all of the information about the shipment arriving into the port. You will be supplying things like your bill of lading, your commercial invoice, your packing list. The customs broker then will enter all of that information into software to Customs and Border Protection. If it indicates that there is a food or beverage or drug or medical device, then FDA will become involved. It will send a message to FDA saying this is an FDA regulated product in this container. And FDA then will have a number of options. They could immediately release the product. They could further review the entry. They could physically inspect the shipment. Or they could just outright refuse entry of the shipment uh, if, for example, it's on a, a, a red list or a reason that they deem uh, they have uh, the, the right to go ahead and refuse it based on regulations. So what they do, really, in the large part, depends on the history of the country, the history of the manufacturer, the history of the importer, the product type. Is it a high-risk product category? Is it a drug, for example, or a food? Or is it lower risk? Is it a cosmetic? Uh, and they'll look at the specific product as well. So within food, is it a seafood product, which tends to be higher risk? Or is it fresh juice? Or can, is it a canned food product? Again, uh, higher risk. Now, I explained briefly how it goes. FDA, of course, has a flow chart uh, that they follow through. Their systems operate on uh, what ifs. Uh, and they kind of go through a flow chart of what needs to be done. And most of this is, of course, at this point, automated. Now, since you're the exporter, you're over here, you're the manufacturer, you're exporting, Generally speaking, you are not going to know the status of your shipment, what's happening actually with your shipment, uh, because you will not have any direct interaction with FDA as the manufacturer. FDA will notify uh, two parties uh, when shipments are uh, entered into the U.S. They'll notify the importer of record, which would typically be your customer, and they'll notify the customs broker. So I, I say uh, on my slide here, always I, I recommend companies be cautious against letters of credit, for example, that say payment after FDA passage. You'll not be notified when a container has passed FDA. So there's really no way for you to verify when a shipment has cleared FDA. It's your importer who's going to control all of that. Companies can act as a foreign importer of record. You can be located here in Saigon. You can be uh, registered as a foreign importer and hire your own customs broker and put product into a warehouse like preferred freezers. Give you a plug there. Uh, and then actually from here, tell them what to release once the product has been cleared. So you can, it does exist an option to be what's called a foreign importer of record, where you then can control the entire process. There's some benefits, obviously. You have more control the whole way through. The customs broker is hired by you and is uh, going to be communicating directly with you about the status of your shipment. There's also some cons. There'll be more expenses. You'll be having to hire a customs broker you will have to pay the cost of uh, storing product until you release it to your customers. Uh, so again, it's something to consider. Um, 
To be a foreign importer of record is fairly straightforward. It's some paperwork that you complete with a customs broker that gets submitted to uh, Customs Border Protection. So it's not a terribly difficult process, and it does give you some control. FDA has started using some, a, a, a new program that they developed called PREDICT. PREDICT basically is a risk-based screening system that is quantifying the risk of imported food shipments. So it, in essence, creates a score of how risky a particular shipment might be. Because FDA doesn't have unlimited resources, they can't look at every shipment. They need to focus their resources on what they consider to be the highest risk shipments. So using this new software, which was launched in 2007 in Los Angeles, they are able to better utilize their resources, their inspection resources in the ports of entry. This software that they developed will allow them to look at and to, again, create a score, in essence, for a particular shipment based on the history of, of the product, the histories of the producer, the manufacturer, the consignee, the country of origin, any past laboratory tests that have been done, any inspections that have been done at a foreign facility. All of these elements go into this software for them to, again, better target their inspections. Uh, this chart shows some of the reasons, the, the percentages of detentions uh, of, uh, that FDA has uh, uh, conducted um, or, or uh, carried out. Uh, this was done um, using actual uh, detentions, inspections, I should say, um, in 2009 for a six-month period. Really, the, the one item on the left here, 33% of detentions are related to labeling. So it's a big number, uh, and it really is a problem that is quite easy to avoid if you take some time and devote some resources to getting your product labeling correct from the beginning. Uh, another reason uh, that ranks high in that list is a failure to have certain types of registrations or process filings. If, for example, you produce a canned food, you're required to register your factory and to submit information about each product produced in that factory, the specific size even of the product's uh, uh, container. So that's another reason that companies encounter dif difficult. So, what percentage of shipments does FDA actually inspect? Well, to give you a little perspective, F uh, uh, Europe, when it comes to animal-based products, so seafood, meat, or poultry, they're inspecting 100% of all shipments arriving into the European Union for animal-based products. Uh, if, um, uh, so that gives you an idea for Europe. Anyone want to speculate for the U.S., FDA, any idea what percentage FDA inspects for food? Anyone want to take a guess? Out of 100 shipments, they inspect less than two. So about 2%. So we often have clients exporting for many years to the U.S. and they'll say, my container got stopped. I've been shipping this product for years. Why? What happened? Why now? Sometimes it is just random. Uh, it's a little bit like uh, speeding down the highway. You don't get stopped. You don't get stopped for months or years, and then your day comes and your container just gets stopped. So it's a, it's a small percentage, uh, but it is obviously uh, can be very costly if it does happen to you.